Welcome back to Lane's ED Enhancement. Today we're going to be looking at practical cargo planning stowing exercise. We're going to start with an introduction to the, some basic principles. First, let us identify certain location on the vessel. The following diagram depicts a typical container vessel. Please don't laugh at my ship. Now, first we have the bow. As you can see, it's the forward section of the ship. We have the stern, also called the aft. We have the port side, which is your left side if you're standing on the vessel facing the bow and we have the starboard side which is the right side now we also have bays the bays run from the bow all the way to the stern with the even number for 40 foot bays and odd numbers representing the 20 foot bays we also identify on this diagram a midship a midship assists us with identifying exactly where we start to count port and starboard rows on the vessel okay now let us look at a typical excel table this table consists of columns which are vertical and rows which are horizontal however in shipping a bay below deck is configured similar to this table except what is the exception let us look at a typical 40 foot bay below deck on a container vessel here the rows are horizontally aligned and represent a stack of containers so each row represent a stack of containers from the floor of the vessel right up to the underside of the arch cover and it runs similar let us look at these containers represented by a b c d and e so each level is called a tier each level is called a tier so a would be on the tier that is on the floor followed by b which is on the tier above and it continues up until we reaches e which is right under the arch cover now Let us look at a particular bay, we call it bay 6, which is a 40 foot bay below deck. As we had said earlier, the left side of the bay represents the port side and the right side represents the starboard side. Now, all 40 foot bays are noted by even numbers. And so we have a bay six with containers A to E in the bay, right? And as we stated earlier, the tiers run horizontally straight across each row. So A would be in a particular tier, B would be in tier two, and it continues up to E. Now, since this bay as an even number of rows we are going to look at how we label the rows and the tiers so any bay with an even number of rows we would first find the amidship which is right at this point as indicated here right between these two rows once we have identified that the next thing we will label the port side rows all even numbers starting from zero two 
until we reach the width of the vessel. In this case, we would stop at 0, 06. We then return to a midship and do the same on the starboard side, starting from 0, 01 until we reach the other side of the vessel, which is row 05. The tiers are also numbered different, starting from the floor in the ship's hole with 02 until we reach the tier that is directly below the arch cover. Now, let's identify where each of these containers, A, B, C, D and E are located. So we have bay 6, 40 foot bay, and we are looking at below deck. And we know, we just want to identify the positions of these um, containers using three coordinates. We're going to be using the bay, the row, and the tear. Now, we know that containers cannot float, but for this exercise, we will distribute them all over the bay. So let us look. So A, first we have the container A, B, C, D, and E, and we have labeled the bay, the row, and the tear. Now container A, as we can see, is in bay 06. It is in row 05 and it is on tier 02. Likewise, B is in bay 06, row 01 and tier 04. Container C is in bay 06, row 04 and tier 06. Container D is in bay 06, row 03, and tier 08. And container he is in 06, bay 06, row, and 10 tier. Now, what happened when we have an odd number of rows? Let's look at that. First, we identify the middle row. So in this case, we are looking at a bay with seven rows. So we identify the middle row and label the middle row zero, zero. We then proceed to label port and starboard side with even and odd numbers respectively. So we see zero, two, four, zero, six, and we continue on the starboard side, 0, 1, 0, 3, 0, 5. Now let's see how 20 foot containers would be represented on a bay. Let us see how these 20 foot can be represented. Once we have 20 foot containers, we must now have two identical bays. First, we know that once we are identifying a 40 foot, we are going to use bay 06. If we are identifying a 20 foot in the forward bay, we will use 05, one less than the 40 foot bay. If we are identifying a 20 foot in the after bay, we would use bay 07, one more than the 40 foot bay. Okay, now let us look at these containers. Here we have container A in the forward bay, corresponding with container B. We have container C in the after. We have container D in the forward, corresponding with container C in the after. Then we have container E indicated in the forward, but we have a X 
Likewise, we have container F and we have another X in the corresponding after bill. Now, let us look at what exactly that means. So let us now store 20s and 40s together. Container A is identified in the forward B, which is 05. It is in row 01 and tier 02. Container B is in the after B, which is row B07. It is also in row 01 and it is also on tier 02. That simply means these two 20 foot containers are side by side. Let us look at D in the forward. It is again 05, 01, 04, and C would be 07, 01, 04. They again correspond. Now, let us look at container E. Now, this is considered a 40 foot. And that's the reason why we put an X in the after side. That means that container takes up the complete bay. So whenever we are identifying a 40 foot, we would not say bay 05, although it's over there. But we are, since the X corresponds, we know that it takes up the full bay. So we now call it 06 to identify that it's a 40 foot distinct from saying 05 or 07. So E would be in 06, 01, 06. F would be in 06, 01, 08. Now, we will view this graphically. So let us look at this display. First, we need to know that all the containers are in row 01. The 20-foot containers A and B are on the same tier 02, but in different bays. A would be in the forward bay and B would be in the after bay 7. So it's 5 and 7 respectively. Looking at 20 foot containers D and C, they are on the same tier but in different bays. Forward bay, that is D, that would be 0, 05, and the after bay for C would be 0, 07. Now the 40 foot containers E and F are in bay 6, but they are on different tier. One is on 06 and the other is on 08. So we put the container numbers in the forward bay and we put a corresponding X in the slot that is corresponding with that container in the after side. This means that nothing else can hold in that position. So join us next time when we will start some simple stool, we are going to call it basic. But remember to subscribe, like, and share to Lane's ED Enhancement. Looking forward to seeing you in short order. Take care.